On the day of my childhood sweetheart's birthday, the transfer student deliberately smashed the gift I had spent a month making. She cried and apologized to me. Victor James, however, shielded her behind him and gently coaxed. Don't be afraid, it's just a worthless trinket. I said nothing and turned to leave, but on my way back, I encountered robbers. In a panic, I instinctively called Victor, crying for help. He impatiently hung up the phone. Claire, I'm just your neighbor. If something happens, call the police. Don't bother me. The next day, my body appeared on a deserted street. Barely clothed, covered in bruises. When I opened my eyes again, I was back to the day of Victor's birthday. Ding! Wiss Novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. Crash! The two-meter Lego set was smashed to pieces. Ember's eyes widened in horror, tears streaming down. I, I am sorry, Miss Owen, I didn't mean to. I stared blankly at Ember, whose eyes were red like a rabbit's. Did I come back to life? Seeing my silence, Victor's face darkened. He pulled Ember to his side. With a gentle tone, he coaxed. Don't be afraid, it's just a worthless trinket. It's fine if it's broken. Hearing this, everyone in the room looked at me. Everyone knew I had spent a whole month preparing Victor's birthday gift. I even stayed up all night in the last few days. But now he said it was just a worthless trinket. Someone couldn't stand it anymore. Victor, how could you say that? Claire made that gift herself and you still criticize it. Exactly, last time Mike got nothing but a happy birthday from Claire, you should be grateful. What was meant as a joke made Victor's face turn cold. He sneered at me and let out a laugh. Did I ask her to make it for me? The atmosphere instantly turned icy. No one expected him to suddenly turn hostile. After all, the James and Owen families were old friends, and Victor and I were childhood friends. In our circle, it was almost an open secret that I liked Victor. And regarding my affection, Victor neither accepted nor rejected it. He allowed me to stay by his side. Until Ember suddenly appeared. Everyone was embarrassed, except for Ember, who showed a smug smile in the corner. The scene of my tragic death was still vivid in my mind. Coming back to my senses, I didn't hesitate and slapped her in the face. Victor immediately grabbed my wrist, his eyes narrowing dangerously. Claire Owen, who gave you the courage to touch my girl? I looked steadily at Victor. The face that once fascinated me was now full of anger. Seeing me staring at him in a daze, Victor's anger subsided a bit. He raised an eyebrow playfully. But the next second, I shook off his hand in disgust. Victor's face darkened instantly. What was that look? How dare you despise me? I didn't hesitate and said coldly. Ember deliberately smashed my Lego set, I gave her a slap in return, we're even. Victor ignored the slap but gritted his teeth and asked. Who are you throwing a tantrum for? I'll give you one more chance, answer my question again. Looking at Victor's livid face, I suddenly found it very amusing. He could despise me, but I couldn't despise him? I didn't speak. Instead, I answered him with my actions. I took out a tissue, wiped my hands, and threw it away. Then I turned and left. As I walked out the door, I heard a loud crash of tables and chairs being kicked over and Ember's exclamation. I didn't leave the party place immediately. Instead, I called my best friend to come and pick me up. By the time Wendy and the driver arrived, I had already reported to the police. This time, those robbers won't be able to harm anyone again. After handling this matter, I finally felt relieved. I drifted off to sleep in a daze. When I woke up, the car had stopped outside a clubhouse. I originally wanted to go home. But Wendy clung to my arm and acted cute. Come on, today is Lance's birthday, Jack will definitely be there too. I worked so hard to get into their circle, you can't not help me. Lance Walsh? I paused. In my previous life, the first person to find my body was him. I floated in the air, watching him kneel in front of me with bloodshot eyes, trembling as he wrapped me in his coat. Then he went crazy and almost beat Victor to death when he rushed in after hearing the news. I guess I've known Lance since we were kids. But since Victor disliked him, I didn't have much interaction with him either. 
I just didn't expect that the person who would end up taking care of my body would be him. Since I'm here, saying happy birthday doesn't seem too troublesome. There were a lot of people in the private room. Wendy had already disappeared. I cursed myself for being too impulsive. Just as I was about to leave, Lance suddenly appeared. His chest was slightly heaving. Because he was so close, his breath almost hit my face. I greeted him awkwardly, hi, happy birthday. He nodded without changing his expression. I was just about to find a topic to ease the awkward atmosphere. Lance suddenly said, wait for me a bit, I'll be right back. When he returned, he was holding a large cake. His throat moved. You came to wish me a happy birthday, so I'll treat you to cake. I was a bit stunned. For me? The whole cake? No need for the cake, I didn't prepare a gift for you. Lance's eyes dimmed, he actually looked a bit disappointed. I wanted to slap myself right then and there. How about I make it up to you later? He immediately looked up at me, his gaze falling on the Lego bunny keychain on my bag, he pursed his lips. Can that be my gift? Since the birthday boy had already asked, how could I refuse? Besides, I made it myself, it's not worth much. I straightforwardly took off the keychain and handed it to him, grabbed the cake, and found an excuse to slip away. When I got home, there were more than a dozen missed calls on my phone. They were all from Victor James. It was probably too noisy in the private room earlier, so I didn't hear them. But even if I had, I wouldn't have answered. I directly blocked his number. The next day at school, I had just sat down when I felt a cold gaze on my back. I knew it was Victor. Yesterday, not only did I embarrass him, but I also blocked his number. He must be furious. But I didn't want to deal with him. After a while, Ember also arrived. She naturally walked over to Victor, smiling as she took breakfast out of her bag and handed it to him. Victor usually despises street food for being unclean. But he paused, glanced at me, and then deliberately said loudly. I told you not to get up early to bring me breakfast. I'll feel bad if you don't sleep well. I knew he was waiting for me to stop Ember, just like before. Previously, Ember had also brought breakfast for Victor. But Victor's stomach is weak. Worried that his stomach couldn't handle it, I immediately stopped her. This made Ember so flustered that she almost cried. That was the first time Victor got angry at me. He demanded I apologize to Ember with a dark face. I gritted my teeth and refused to speak. He then threatened to break up our friendship. In the end, I had no choice. I bit my lip hard and tearfully apologized to Ember in front of everyone. Thinking back now, even if I hadn't stopped her, Victor might not have eaten that food anyway. But with me standing up, he certainly wouldn't actively reject Ember and hurt her feelings. From beginning to end, I was just a part of their play. Thinking about it makes me sick. The boys around us immediately started jeering. Oh wow, Ember is so thoughtful, bringing breakfast for Victor. Victor, I haven't eaten either. Can you spare me a dough stick? With their teasing, Victor's face finally didn't look as bad. He protected the blushing Ember behind him, smiling as he told them to get lost. I didn't say a word the whole time. Even if he choked on his food today, I would just clap and cheer. And Victor didn't look at me again. Until the afternoon PE class. I was working on a paper when Wendy rushed me to the playground. Hurry! Victor and Lance are fighting. When I arrived, I indeed saw a familiar scene. The two of them were full of hostility, wrestling with each other. A crowd was watching the commotion, but no one dared to stop them. Ember stood anxiously to the side, looking like she was about to cry. I've seen Victor's fighting skills before. Afraid that Lance would suffer, I immediately rushed forward to separate them. Seeing me, Victor forcibly withdrew his fist. He pointed to the keychain on Lance's phone, veins bulging on his forehead as he angrily shouted. Right in front of me, you dare protect him? Tell me why the gift you gave me is with Lance. I lowered my arms and replied coldly. This is my thing. I remember you despised it and didn't accept it. Victor's face changed drastically. It wasn't even a big deal. Victor is a rabbit in the Zodiac, and on Christmas, I had made a little rabbit keychain to give to him happily. 
but he dismissed it as childish and threw it aside, saying it was immature. He turned around and wore the dog bracelet Ember had woven for him. I was sad for a long time after that. Now that I think about it, it's not that the rabbit isn't cute, nor that the dog is too cute. It's just that in Victor's heart, I was never as good as Ember. So even the rabbit keychain I gave him was despised. Victor's chest heaved violently, and he shouted at me in anger and shame. So what? Did I say anything wrong? This worthless thing is childish, and I don't want it. Is that a problem? No problem, so I gave it to someone else. What Victor didn't like, someone else would appreciate. I didn't want to entangle with Victor anymore. I turned to Lance and said softly, let's go. Lance's usually cold face finally showed some warmth. He nodded. As we were about to leave, he suddenly stopped. With deep affection, he held the keychain in his hand and said in a meaningful tone, Thanks, Victor, for giving up this treasure. This is the best birthday gift I've ever received, and I will cherish it. I helplessly turned to leave, but Victor, who had gone mad, grabbed my arm. His eyes were bloodshot as he squeezed out. Claire, if you dare leave with him today, just try. I was utterly disgusted by Victor's attempt to control me. As if my every move had to be decided by him. In his stunned expression, I shook off his hand with disgust. Why wouldn't I dare? Victor looked at me in disbelief as I walked away. His figure seemed frozen in place, not moving for a long time. From that day on, Victor drew a clear line between us. I was naturally happy about it. I also started seeing him and Ember showing off their affection at school more often. That day, I had just come out of the office when I saw Victor and Ember skipping class at the corner near the restroom. Victor leaned lazily against the window, surrounded by smoke. Ember nestled close to him like a little bird. Seeing I was about to walk away, Ember suddenly called my name sweetly from behind. Claire, where are you going? Victor stiffened, turned his head away with a sneer, refusing to look at me. I frowned. Don't use that tone with me. We're not that close. It was really unlucky. Ember was a poor student on a scholarship. When she first transferred to her class, almost no one wanted to talk to her. In this aristocratic school that valued family background, she was inevitably isolated. In the end, I couldn't stand it and took her under my wing. Unexpectedly, she replaced me and got close to Victor. Ember was stunned, tears quickly welling up in her eyes. She quickly bowed to me, stammering an apology. S sorry, Miss Owen. After apologizing, she looked at Victor helplessly, her eyes full of fear. Victor, did I upset Miss Owen again? Seeing this, Victor immediately stood up straight, shielding her behind him, frowning tightly. Claire, when will you stop? Are you addicted to bullying Ember? What a joke. Is his Ember a fool? So easily bullied and doesn't know how to fight back. If you're so afraid she'll be bullied, why don't you tie a rope around her neck and protect her yourself? Victor's face turned livid with anger. The next second, he hugged Ember's waist right in front of me and kissed her hard. The sound of their lips and tongues mingling was loud. Ember's face turned red from the kiss, and she couldn't help but moan softly. Victor stared at me intently. His eyes were full of provocation. I looked disgusted. Wow. She can even kiss like that? I can't even imagine how bad Victor's mouth smells after smoking. I frowned in disgust as I walked past these two lustful animals. I didn't see the hint of joy flashing in Victor's eyes. A few days later was Victor's father's birthday party. I didn't want to attend, but a friend dragged me along. After a while, she asked me what was going on between me and Lance. I answered honestly. Then what's going on between you and Victor? Do you really plan to never interact with him again? Everyone in our circle knew how I treated Victor all these years. No one believed I had really given up on him. Seeing I didn't respond, my friend raised her glass and sneered. I never looked Ember in the eye. She's just a two-faced girl. The next second, footsteps sounded behind us. My friend didn't continue, and said to the newcomer, I brought Claire for you, Victor. Don't make her upset again. Victor responded lazily. Seeing my friend walk away, 
I also planned to leave. I didn't blame her for helping Victor. After all, she didn't know the whole story. But I really didn't want any more interaction with Victor. I came today because I knew he would be with Ember celebrating her grandmother's birthday. Who knew he didn't leave? Ignoring my struggles, Victor dragged me to a secluded place and lazily said, Why are you running? Are you so afraid to see me? Huh? Was my disgust not obvious enough? Are you crazy? If you like fantasizing so much, why don't you write a story? Victor sneered, his eyes flashing with contempt. Enough, Claire. I know you used to like me and can't stand seeing me with Ember. But she's different from you. She's pure, don't use your dirty tricks on her. So ridiculous. You said it yourself, it was in the past. Now I sincerely wish you and Ember a long and happy life together. Lock it forever. Seeing I wasn't joking, Victor's face changed. He put away his playful demeanor. Claire, some acts are overdone. Do I look like I'm acting? You should know about Lance and me, right? Sorry, Lance, borrowing you for a moment. Anyway, Victor already resents you, one more grudge won't matter. Victor's face darkened, his voice violent. Claire, I told you, you're overacting. If you don't like me, why did you walk away sadly when you saw me kiss Ember at school? I was really fed up with his pestering. Was that walking away sadly? I was clearly disgusted and left, okay? You're overthinking. I have someone I like. I don't care what you two do. After saying that, I turned to leave. Not sure which words triggered him, Victor suddenly pressed me against the wall. His eyes were full of madness, and he kissed me frantically. I don't believe it. You've liked me for so many years, how can you not care about me kissing someone else? I suppressed my disgust and desperately pushed his head away. Just as he was about to touch my lips, a trembling and sharp female voice sounded. Victor! What are you doing? Victor's body stiffened. I pushed him away and wiped my mouth in disgust. So gross. Ember's face was tear-streaked, crying as if her heart was breaking. Victor's gaze was heavy, but he showed no panic. I turned to leave. Ember blocked my way, questioning with tears in her voice. Miss Owen, why are you kissing my boyfriend? Don't you know he has a girlfriend? Did you bring me here just to show me this? Victor suddenly turned around, his eyes sharp. Did you bring Ember here? Who the hell want to see this witch Ember? I was fed up with being falsely accused again and again. Screw you! Both of you idiots, stay away from me and don't bother me. But Victor was convinced it was my setup. He grabbed my hand tightly, forcing me to explain to Ember and apologize. I slapped him hard, turning his head to the side. The scene instantly quieted down. That's my explanation, satisfied? Victor ended up getting slapped a few times by his father and was locked up. Ember also got slapped a few times by friends who came to know about the incident, and she left with a swollen face. After going home, I decided to switch classes. It was a critical time, and the school had good teachers. I didn't want to transfer to another school. Of course, I also didn't want to see those two disgusting faces again. The next day, I arrived at the class very late. Victor was sitting there with a gloomy face, his mouth full of bruises. It looked like he had been beaten badly. Ember was tenderly applying medicine to him. Seeing me packing my things, some people lowered their heads and whispered. I ignored them and planned to leave after packing. Suddenly, a girl stood up and said loudly, Claire Owen, you're just leaving like this? Don't you think you owe Ember an apology? Everyone looked at me with a gossipy expression. Ember tugged at her clothes, tears streaming down her face. Amy, I'm fine. Don't say anymore. Miss Owen only did this because she couldn't stand me taking Victor away from her. Amy was exasperated. You're too kind, that's why people bully you. So what if her family has money? Does having money mean she can steal someone else's boyfriend? Shameless homewrecker, I, ah. I threw my book hard at her face. What evidence do you have to call me a homewrecker? Victor suddenly spoke coldly, 
I am the evidence. He looked at me and ordered, apologize to Ember, and this matter will be over. A look of joy flashed in Ember's eyes, but she pursed her lips and said deliberately, Forget it, Victor. Don't get angry at Miss Owen because of me. As long as you're happy, I don't mind being wronged. I believe in you. Looking at Ember's pretentious act, I sneered. You really know how to act, you witch. You said I called you to the party. Do you have any evidence? Did I call or text you? There should be a record. Ever since I cursed her out last time, my use of swear words had increased dramatically. But it's okay. Saying swear words makes my heart clean. Ember's face stiffened, and she shook her head with a bitter smile. Miss Owen, I don't intend to pursue this matter anymore, so why be so aggressive? I laughed coldly, since you can't produce any evidence, then it's slander. Without evidence, you're just spreading rumors. Amy got angry, Ember, show her the screenshots, see how she can deny it then. Everyone looked at Ember expectantly. Only she had a cold face. If you wanted me to come over, why would you leave evidence? Someone else told me. I chuckled. Then tell me, who did I ask, when, and where did I pass the message? Let them confront me. Ember's face immediately looked a bit ugly. Amy kept urging her to call someone to confront me. But she stammered and couldn't say anything. Smart people had already seen the truth. Fools were still waiting for evidence. Victor understood, his face darkened as he shouted, enough. This matter ends here. I shrugged indifferently. After all, it wasn't the first time he sided with Ember. I didn't care at all. But Ember didn't think so. She bit her lip in embarrassment and questioned me excitedly. Even if you didn't call me over, did I say anything wrong about you kissing Victor first? Anyone with eyes could see that Victor had forced me that day. But she twisted the facts. Just as I was about to speak, a cold male voice came from the door. Instead of questioning others here, why not ask your good boyfriend what he did? Lance stood at the door, his gaze heavy. Why are you here? He took the things from my hands and said gently. Wendy noticed you hadn't been around for a while, so she asked me to check on you. Victor's eyes shot daggers at Lance. You dare show up in front of me? Lance protected me behind him and raised an eyebrow with a smile. I don't have time to fight you today. I'm here to take Claire to her new class. You know how to infuriate him. Sure enough, Victor's face twisted as he looked at me. You're leaving? I showed no emotion, it's none of your business. Take care of your girlfriend and stop her from spreading rumors. Before leaving, Lance said to Ember. If Miss Ember continues to twist the truth, I don't mind projecting the surveillance footage from that time in all the classes. But by then, the one embarrassed will probably be you. Ember's face turned pale instantly. After moving to the new class, I adapted very well. Unlike class 3, the atmosphere in class 1 is very friendly. After all, I have friends like Wendy and Lance here. That's right, Lance is now considered a friend of mine. After interacting with him, I realized he is far superior to Victor in many ways. He is very polite and not blindly confident. Most importantly, he is also a super academic achiever. Being with him has significantly improved my grades. Today, the school organized an outing. They called it an outing, but it was basically taking these young masters and misses out for some fun. While waiting for the bus, Wendy was, as usual, glued to Jack. Lance and I were discussing math problems. Suddenly, I felt a strong gaze on me. I knew it was Victor. Ever since I transferred to class 3, he has been stalking me like a creep. On the day of the physical test, I had such severe menstrual pain that I couldn't stand up straight. Lance carried me to the infirmary, and Victor immediately rushed over, wanting to take me from him. It was Jack who brought people to stop him. Victor also tried to ask his friends in our circle to reconcile with me. But after knowing the absurd things he did, no one was willing to help him anymore. He turned against his childhood friend, who had strong ties to his own benefit, for a poor student. This is not what a wise heir should do. Victor is too emotionally unstable. And instability means risk. So, friends in our circle gradually distanced themselves from him. 
After a while, Lance was called away by the teacher. I stayed in place alone. Victor suddenly appeared behind me, his voice seemingly suppressing something. It revealed a strong sense of unwillingness. Is it because of him? Did Lance Walsh seduce you, so you couldn't wait to leave me? I stared at him, suddenly feeling exhausted. How can a person be so shameless? It was he who indulged Ember in provoking and insulting me. Now, he is the one questioning and blaming me for changing my affection. This game of chasing each other, I am truly fed up with it. Victor James, have I ever told you? A glimmer of hope flashed in Victor's eyes, what? With his expectant expression, I said word by word, the thing I regret most in my life is knowing you. You now utterly disgust me. After saying this, I didn't look at him again and turned to get on the bus. He stood there, pale and stunned, not moving for a long time. The sun stretched his lonely figure long. It clashed with the bustling surroundings. Once childhood friends. Eventually became strangers. After a full day of fun, I plunged back into my intense review sessions. Our four-person study group with Lance, Wendy, Jack, and me was officially formed. Although the days filled with studying were tough, they were also fulfilling. This was a joy I had never experienced with Victor and the others. At this moment, I wasn't the Owen family's heiress. I was just Claire Owen, working hard for my own future. During dinner, my parents tentatively asked, Sweetie, if you find it too hard, we can arrange for you to study abroad. We've already discussed it with Mr. and Mr. Walsh. Lance would go with you, so we wouldn't worry as much. My parents knew Victor and I had broken up. A while ago, he came to our house drunk looking for me. He happened to run into Lance, who was having dinner with us. Victor was so furious he almost went crazy and was about to fight Lance. In the end, my dad had to call someone to kick him out. I shook my head. No, Lance and I both think the universities here are great, there's no need to go abroad. Lance and I shared the same thoughts about studying abroad. There are many top-notch universities here, so why go far away? Of course, if we want to pursue further studies in the future, it's not too late to go abroad then. My parents looked at me with relief, piling food into my bowl. That's our good girl, so proud of you. Eat more, look how skinny you are, it makes mom's heart ache. And dad too. Dad's heart aches a lot. These are wild mushrooms I specially had your uncle bring from home, they taste amazing. There's more in the kitchen, you can take some to Lance and the others later. Looking at my parents' loving eyes, my eyes felt a bit teary. In my previous life, when they saw my body in the morgue, my mom went crazy. My dad's hair turned white overnight, and he aged 10 years. Thankfully, I have another chance. I composed myself and gave them a big smile. Dad, Mom, I love you guys so much till death. My mom glared at me playfully. Stop saying death, it's so unlucky. Spit three times. I laughed and hugged her arm, acting spoiled. Suddenly, my phone rang. I picked it up and saw it was an unknown number. When I answered, a worried voice came through. Hello? Is this Claire? Victor got into a car accident while racing and is now in the hospital. He kept calling your name while unconscious. Can you come and help him? I regretted answering the call. Hearing news about Victor at such a warm moment was really annoying. I coldly repeated the words he once said to me. No, I'm just his neighbor. If he needs help, find a doctor, don't bother me. In the hospital, hearing the busy signal from the phone, the young man's face looked a bit grim. Victor, Claire said she's just your neighbor and told you not to bother her, then hung up. Victor was still stunned, not understanding what had happened. He had just planned to visit Claire's grave first, as he did every year. The next moment, he found himself in the hospital. But upon hearing Claire's name, he couldn't care about anything else. He immediately jumped off the bed and grabbed the young man's collar, asking, Did you say Claire Owen? She's alive? What exactly did she say? The young man was almost in tears from fear. She said she's just your neighbor and told you to find a doctor if you need help, don't bother her. Victor's face lit up with joy. He tore off the four drip and ran out like a madman. He didn't know if this was a miracle. 
But in this life, his Claire was indeed alive. He couldn't wait to see her. But he ran into Ember, who had rushed over anxiously. She hugged Victor with red eyes. Victor, you scared me to death. Thank goodness you're okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to live. You don't know how worried I was when I heard about you. Victor forcefully pushed her away, his eyes full of disgust. Ember stood there stunned, even forgetting to wipe her tears. Victor, what's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? Victor looked at Ember's innocent face. The more he had liked her before, the more he hated her now. If it weren't for her instigating on his birthday, saying that Claire was deliberately trying to attract his attention to make him give in. How could he have ignored Claire, leading her to such a tragic end? In the previous world, Ember had been tormented by him to the point of wishing for death. This one wouldn't escape either. Seeing the murderous look in Victor's eyes, Ember couldn't help but tremble all over. She could only watch him leave, not daring to stop him. Inside the villa area, Lance and I were leisurely taking a walk. Looking at the tall, sharp-featured guy beside me, I couldn't help but think back to the first day I spoke to him. He usually seemed so serious, but he actually liked little bunnies. Seeing me giggling foolishly, a small curve appeared at the corner of Lance's lips. What are you laughing at, so happy? I deliberately crossed my arms and gave him a sidelong glance. TSK, I never thought, the renowned Lance Walsh would like little bunny trinkets. Lance raised an eyebrow. So what? Can't I like little bunnies? Ignoring me, he stopped walking. Actually, Victor and I are both born in the year of the rabbit. I saw you giving him a gift that day, but unlike me, he doesn't have such good taste. He mistook fish eyes for pearls and lost the real gem. Lance looked at me with gentle eyes, his dark pupils clear and transparent. In the reflection of his eyes, I could clearly see my face turning slightly red. I instinctively covered my burning cheeks and looked away, feeling uncomfortable. I left Lance behind and walked straight ahead. Instantly, I heard the muffled laughter of a guy from behind. I was so embarrassed and angry that I wanted to turn around and scold him. But then someone took my hand. I didn't know when Lance had caught up with me. Don't be angry, little dumpling. I was anxious. You're the dumpling. Lance teased me on purpose, why not? Your mother said you were chubby and white like a little dumpling when you were a kid. He usually acts all cool, but who would have thought he could be so playful in private? I was so mad that I reached out to pinch him. Lance immediately surrendered, begging for mercy. The two of us playfully bickered all the way back to my house. Unexpectedly, we saw Victor. I didn't know how long he had been standing at the door, his nose tip a bit red from the cold. Seeing our hands clasped together, a flash of malice crossed Victor's eyes. But he quickly returned to normal, looking at me with a burning gaze. Claire, I finally see you again. I rolled my eyes, extremely speechless. I had already made things clear to him last time, so why was he still lingering around? Impatiently, I told him to leave. But Victor acted as if he didn't hear me, walking towards me with red-rimmed eyes. Full of sorrow, he said, I'm sorry, Claire, I came too late. Seeing that trace of tenderness in his eyes that had never belonged to me, my heart skipped a beat. Could it be that he also got reborn? But, this has nothing to do with me. Whether it was in the past life or this life, Victor had never been good to me. Even if he came back, so what? I simply don't care. Seeing my displeased expression, Lance nonchalantly stepped in front of me. Is there something you need from Claire, Victor? A flash of ferocity crossed Victor's eyes. This is between Claire and me. It's none of your business, so get lost. Lance sneered. Claire is my girlfriend. If anyone should leave, it's you. Seeing that Victor was about to lose it, I pulled Lance into the house and slammed the door shut. Victor looked at the closed door, heartbroken. Through the door, he solemnly promised me. Claire, don't worry. This time, I won't let anyone hurt you. I just rolled my eyes. Crazy, do I need your protection? Relying on you, I'd already be reincarnated by now. But it seemed Victor was serious this time. First, he went back to school and dealt with those who used to bully me. 
especially that girl named Amy, who was so scared she didn't come to class for several days. Then he publicly dumped Ember. According to the information Wendy gathered, that morning, Ember had bought breakfast for Victor as usual. She even insisted on feeding him herself. Victor immediately got angry and threw the greasy breakfast at her face, telling her never to bring him pig food again. Then he broke up with her. Ember was stunned, her face shiny with oil, looking ridiculous. She clung to Victor's leg, crying and asking why he was breaking up with her. But Victor had no pity for her, kicking her away. Ember tried to ask Victor's friends to intercede for her. But they never respected her in the first place. They only got close to her because of Victor. Those guys cursed her out and drove her away. Without my help and Victor's support. Ember was isolated once again. That day, Wendy and I were coming back from the office when we saw Amy leading a few people to corner a girl in the bathroom. I frowned and barged in. To my surprise, the person being bullied was Ember. At that moment, she reeked of a foul odor, her wet hair clinging to her face. Her pale, chapped lips had split open in several places. Her face was swollen and red from being slapped. Ember immediately looked up and cried, begging me to save her. Claire, save me! They slapped me several times and forced me to drink toilet water. Please help me get out of here. Beg Victor for me, no, no, beg Mr. James for me. I won't dare to make you angry again. You saved me once, so you can save me a second time, right? Mr. James loves you so much, he'll definitely listen to you. Please, I don't want to die here. Amy looked at me with some fear and said, Claire, this was all Mr. James's order. I nodded and said nothing. I turned and left, ignoring the despair in Ember's eyes. I am no saint. Victor had always targeted Ember since he returned. I guess that my death in a previous life was related to her. Since that was the case, why should I stop it? This was her retribution. Time flew by. The college entrance exams were coming up, and the most important thing now was to maintain a good mindset. So, Lance and I decided to go out for a good meal. But as soon as we stepped out of the school gate, a white car suddenly swerved and charged at us. Inside the car was Ember, looking more like a ghost than a person, filled with resentment. Claire Owen, you ruined my life and stole my lover. I want you to go to hell with me. Die, you witch. Just as the car was about to hit us, a black car suddenly appeared from the side and crashed straight into it. The white car was smashed to pieces and lost control, crashing into a building. Ember, sitting in the driver's seat, spat blood and died on the spot. Even at the moment of her death, she couldn't close her eyes. Victor, who was in the black car, was taken away by the police. He never looked at me again. After the driving incident, the school tightened security. Lance stayed by my side, not leaving for a moment. On the day the exams finally ended, I received a letter from the detention center. It was from Victor. In the letter, he reminisced about many of our childhood memories. Whether it was playing hide-and-seek in an abandoned garden and getting spanked by our parents. Or sneaking wine at adults' birthday parties and getting drunk. Every word was filled with nostalgia. In the end, he apologized and asked for my forgiveness. After reading the letter, I was silent for a long time. Then I let go and burned the letter. He harmed me once, but he also saved my life. In this life and the previous one, our debts are settled. No talk of forgiveness, no talk of hatred. I just wish that for the rest of our lives, we never meet again. Extra, Victor's perspective. Victor had a secret, he really liked the couple who had just moved in next door. They were kind and loving. Unlike his home, which was cold and empty with only him. Every time the couple patted his head, he wanted to ask if they could be his parents. But he soon found out. They couldn't because they already had a cute daughter. Chubby and white, like a little dumpling. He was very jealous of her. But when the little girl softly called his name, he couldn't help but like her. But his father said that people like them couldn't show their feelings so openly. So he kept a stern face towards her. But she wasn't angry, instead, she smiled sweetly. And so it went on for a long, long time. They both grew up. 
His father began to mention the girl frequently. Every word was filled with schemes. He forced him to marry the girl, saying it would be beneficial for the James family. But he didn't want to listen to his father anymore. His father wasn't worthy of being his father and had no right to interfere in his marriage. He wanted to rebel, to break free from the family's constraints. But he was powerless. So he could only vent his anger on the girl. He ignored her, allowed others to bully her, forced her to stop liking him. Later, he succeeded. But he also regretted it. The girl who loved him was ultimately lost because of him. For the rest of his life, he feared he could only see her in his dreams. 